All right, welcome one and all. Uh, today we're going to build a few more methods. Now, this time we're going to focus a little bit on returning uh, methods that actually return information. So, let's get to it. Here we go. Now, again, anytime you make a method, it has to go either above or below the main, uh, not inside of it. So, that's another good reason to mark these braces if you don't do that, uh, particularly because we're going to be having a lot more of these. So I'm going to make a simple method here. Uh, I'm going to give it a couple of variables. It's going to add them up, and then it's going to return the answer of that total. So static int add. Now the int, this is whatever it is I want to return. So if I want to return a double, that's going to be a double. If I want it to be a string, then that'll be a string. These are the two things that I'm going to give it. So I'm going to give it two numbers, and I'm going to call them n1 and n2. Now, if I make a method that returns something, what you'll see here is it says missing return statement. Uh, and that basically just means that if I have an int here, it has to return an int somewhere. Uh, it can't just, you know, not do that. Uh, if it was a void, I wouldn't have to return anything. It'd be fine. But since it's an int, it has to return an int. Now, as I stated in like another project, you don't have to give it the same thing that you're returning. And we'll see that here in a minute. But now, of course, I can do print statements and various other things here. But the simplest thing I can do to get this total is just simply this. Now, if you wanted to, you could say, you know, int total equals n1 plus n2 return total. Uh, so you could add an extra line where you do the math, whichever really works for you. This is a little bit more concise, a little bit e uh, less writing. Uh, but coding is all about if you can understand it. Uh, so sometimes doing things the longer way isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially if it's easier to understand. I can take a, you know, thousand code program and maybe convert it to a hundred lines, but that would probably make it a lot more difficult for somebody who isn't well versed in programming to understand. If I do it the longer way, it might be easier for people to read. Now, when I'm running this method and I say, you know, add 10 comma 10, that's going to be 20, right? 10 gets plugged in, 10 gets plugged in. It's going to turn, return back 10 plus 10, which is 20. This becomes 20. Now, when I run it, you'll notice nothing happens. And the reason for that is, well, it's absolutely not doing anything with that. Am I printing it? Am I saving it? Uh, so anytime I'm returning something, I have to have something here to catch it. So I have to catch that return. Uh, I always like to envision it as you're throwing things at people. I'm going to throw two tens to this up here, and this is where they're going to get caught. Then it's going to throw back the answer, and I've got to put it somewhere. Now, I could also put it in a print statement. And I'll just make it a 30 or something uh, just to be different. There we go. Now, I'm not printing this first one, but I could. Uh, the total is plus total. So I could do this either way. The total is 20 and 10 plus 30 is 40, right? Now, the difference is in the total, that variable is saved and I can use it for stuff. If I do it this way, it's not saved. It's just really not that much different than a void. It's just going to return it back and display it on the screen. The only difference is I can save it if I need to. Now, if this was a public static void, basically I could just print the total on the screen. I couldn't actually save it. Uh, so I'd be kind of out of luck there. Now, let's see another. 
This time I'm going to give it uh, something different. Well, ecstatic. Uh, let's say int get num. Now I'm going to give it a string. And the name, again, doesn't have to be anything fancy, but I just called it in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this string, and if it's 0, 1, or 2, or something like that, I'm going to return that actual number. If it's not, I'll return, you know, negative 1 or something. So if, and I could use a switch case statement here if you want to. Uh, I'll go ahead and just do that. Switch in case, in this case, uh, zero. And I'll just uh, say return zero. And then break. Case one. And I'm going to return one. Break. And we'll just do another one, case two. Just to have something a little extra here. Return two. And then break. And then default. Return negative one. Oh, and it doesn't like my break for some odd reason. Let's see. Unreachable state. Oh, it's because. Of, okay, that's right. Uh, all right, so the reason I've got this break issue here. When you return. It's done. It doesn't do anything else, actually. Uh, so I actually don't need breaks for this. And it's typically unusual, I know, but what does a break do? A break leaves this switch statement, basically. In switch. So in this case, it'll run whatever's code is here, and then it'll break and basically leave the statement. Now, in this case, I just want it to turn a zero, return a one. Now, if I wanted to print it, then this would have to be here. The break would be. But since I'm returning, basically it leaves this entire method and goes back to the main uh, once I hit this return. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I don't actually need it. Uh, but by default, I put it in there because that's just how you write a switch case. Uh, but fortunately, NetBeans was nice enough to tell me that's not needed. So. So what this is going to kind of demonstrate is I'm going to give it a string. And if it's 0, 1, or 2, it'll return those numbers. If it's anything else, it'll return a negative 1. So I'm going to give it a string, but it's going to give me back an integer. Uh, so what I want to illustrate here is whatever you give it does not have to be the same as what you get back. So for example, if I wanted a grade, like a score, a uh, letter grade, I give you a score and you tell me if it's an A, B, C, or D. Uh, I would give a character and maybe return an integer. Or, uh, well, actually, I'd give an integer or double and return a character in that case. Right? So, let's take a look and see what this looks like. And for me, I'll just print it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, the number is, and I'm just going to say, get num, and we'll go ahead and give it a zero. And that should say the number is zero if I did it right. If I change it to a one, it should say one. Two should say two. And of course, any other number should say negative one. Uh, so there's a two pretty decent examples of methods that return things. Uh, one, I give it a couple of numbers and I can give it three, four, or five. You wanna try and add a few more in there. Uh, Add and subtract multiple things or something, you can do that. You just simply put another comma and add some more items. Uh, you can give it a string uh, and then return an integer. I give it four or five different types of variables depending on what I'm looking for. Uh, maybe I'm creating a character in a game. <laughs> well, what data do they need? Uh, we have, you know, a name, maybe an age, race, you know, statistics, classes. It could be all kinds of information I have to pass. So it doesn't necessarily have to return the exact same item. Now this is your basic uh, returning methods. And again, they're gonna be used for when you wanna get something back. So in this case, if I wanna get a number back, and 
and these are very simplistic. A lot of the time, methods are going to be hundreds or maybe even thousands of lines of code. Uh, and they'll do all these calculations and tell you, you know, whatever number, whatever answer you want. And the nice thing about that is I can do it with a single line of code once I get everything programmed. And that is your returning methods.